The Pearl Fountain A long time ago, the fairy queen thought she would go about to see how all the fairies, who live in floods, rivers, streams, and fountains, were getting on since the last hundred years. For it is only once in a century that Her Majesty can take such a survey of her subjects. After traveling a long time, scolding some fairies who had got into mischief, and praising others who had behaved well, the queen came at length to an old, old forest, which grew on the very top of a rocky mountain, and where the trees were so large and the shade was so thick that it was all green within. Indeed, it was so green a place, so dark and so cool, that people were afraid of it and kept aloof. But the fairy queen was afraid of nothing. Moreover, she had particular business in that forest. She wanted to see a little fairy who was only three days old and to whom the fountain of the forest had been given by her mother. The queen found the little fairy all alone by her fountain. It was a beautiful fountain. The water was as clear as clear could be. It came sparkling out of a rock, leaped down other rocks, then ran away and hid itself in the moss. It looked quite a merry sort of fountain, and the little fairy to whom it belonged looked every bit as merry. For when the queen came upon her, she was dancing in the shade and singing to herself in a sweet, clear voice. Because, you see, fairies can talk just as they can run about, as soon as they are born. The queen of the fairies has no children of her own, but she is very fond of little children, and she always thinks the last baby she sees the prettiest. She thought so of this young fairy, who was really a pretty creature, for she had golden hair, blue eyes, and rosy cheeks, and her mother, knowing the queen was coming, had dressed her out in a little frock of silver tissue shot with green and blue. Well, my dear, graciously said the queen of the fairies to this young thing, do you know who I am? Oh, yes, answered the little fairy. You are Her Majesty. What a clever child you are, said the queen, quite pleased. And who are you? Please, Your Majesty, I am the little fairy of the little fountain. My dear, you could not have answered me better. And now, what gift will you have from me, my love? Pearls, answered the little fairy. Then pearls you shall have, said the queen, as many as ever you can wish for. Your fountain shall be all pearls and you may do what you like with them, but you will have to count them, every one. I shall like that, answered the little fairy, for no one must ever take so much as one of my pearls. Well, said the queen, if you mean to keep your pearls to yourself, you must live here all alone and never go out. I shall like that too, said the little fairy, for I shall sing to myself and play with my pearls, and please, Your Majesty, may I be called the Fairy of the Pearl Fountain? The Queen let her have that also, then went her way. The Fairy of the Pearl Fountain remained in the forest and lived there till she grew up to be the loveliest young fairy that had ever been seen. She had a white marble basin made for the water of her fountain to fall into, and the most beautiful wildflower set in the green moss around it. The water sprang up in a jet from the center of the basin, and the delight of the fairy was to stand in the very middle of it, clothed in her robe of silver tissue, shot with green and blue, for it was not a frock now that she was grown up, and to throw the water up ever so high, till it reached the sunshine, and every drop of water she threw up was a pearl when it came down again, 
a beautiful white pearl. Some were big pearls, and some were little ones, and the bottom of the marble basin was covered with them. Indeed, there were so many that the fairy was obliged to let the smallest trickle away every night through a little slit in the basin, for if she had not done so, it would have overflowed. So the pearls slipped away and rolled down the rocks on the mountainside. But no one minded them, or if some passerby did see them by chance, why, he thought he saw drops of water and no more. Though she had so many pearls, the young fairy never thought she had too many, and all her delight was to adorn herself with them. She strung the largest and the clearest on a thread of gold and mixed it up in her hair, and she made a necklace of more and bracelets for her wrists, and a waistband and the hem of her silver tissue robe was all studded with pearls, and there was not another fairy who had so many. She counted them every one as the queen had ordered her, and when she laid herself down on the moss at night, she still counted them in her sleep. Indeed, she was so fond of her pearls and so jealous of them that she never left her fountain lest anyone should come and steal them whilst she was away. This lasted a long time, till one day the fairy, finding that no one ever came near the place, and wishing to go and see her sister, who lived outside the forest in a crystal turret on a rock, and was indeed no less than the fairy of the waterfall, put on her best pearls and left her fountain for the first time. Being a fairy, she could go on counting the pearls of the fountain all the same, Well, the fairy was glad to see her sister, and pleased to climb up to the very top of the crystal turret, and look down at the world below, for she had never been out before, and she was enjoying herself very much, when all of a sudden she cried out, I must go, I miss a pearl, no, it is not one, but two, I declare three pearls are gone. "'What matter about three pearls?' said her sister. "'Have you not got enough?' "'But the fairy of the pearl fountain declared "'there was no misfortune like that of losing one's pearls, "'and went away in a great hurry. "'She missed two more pearls as she walked through the forest, "'for she was not one of those fairies "'who have only to wish themselves in a place to be in it. "'And on reaching the fountain, She looked at once for the thief, but she only saw a little wren perched on the edge of the marble basin and catching a drop of the spray in her bill as it fell. "'You little robber!' cried the fairy in a rage. "'Is it you who have been stealing my pearls?' "'Please, ma'am,' replied the wren, quite frightened at seeing her so angry. I am only drinking a drop of water. A drop of water? Don't you know, you dishonest bird, that what was only a drop of water when you drank it would have turned into a beautiful pearl if it had fallen into the basin? Look down at the bottom and see. All these pearls were drops of water once. I protest, ma'am, I knew nothing of the kind answered the little wren, speaking very humbly, for she had never seen so grand a lady as the fairy of the pearl fountain with her beautiful hair and her pearls. I saw water, continued the wren. I was very thirsty, and I made bold to drink. Surely I thought the good fairy who owns this lovely fountain will never be angry with me for taking a drop of water. And I can assure you, ma'am, added the wren, dropping the fairy a curtsy, that it was the very sweetest water I ever tasted, and I do hope you will forgive me. The fairy of the pearl fountain had a hasty temper, but she was not hard-hearted. She looked kindly down on the little wren and said, You are a silly bird 
and I dare say did not know pearls from water. I suppose I must forgive you this once, but mind you never do such a thing again. Oh, no, ma'am, never, answered the wren very earnestly. And please, ma'am, may I go home to the palace now? Home to the palace, repeated the fairy. What do you mean? Now, everyone, big or little, has a story. And the story of the wren was this. She had built her nest in the garden of the king's palace and was making herself comfortable there. When the young prince found her out, caught her, and would have killed her if his sister had not come up in time to save her life. The princess did more, for she took the poor little wren, who was frightened to death, to her own room, and gave her a beautiful cage to live in and keep her out of danger. But as the wren is fond of going about, she let her have a fly every day, and kept a window in her room always open, so that she might have no trouble in getting in or out. All this the wren told the fairy, not in a few words, but in a good many, for she is a chatterbox if ever there was one, and can talk by the hour. The fairy, however, did not mind letting her have her say, for she had got into the fountain again, and was throwing up the water ever so high, and trying to catch the beautiful pearls as they fell back. She missed a good many, for some rolled down her neck and shoulders, and others got in her hair and stayed there, and others again slipped through her fingers and fell into the basin. Oh, ma'am, how beautiful you are, the wren could not help saying, and how pretty it is to see you playing with those lovely pearls. You have a great deal of sense, said the fairy. By the way, what is your name? Jenny, ma'am, answered the wren, dropping her another curtsy. The princess always calls me Jenny. Never mind the princess, said the fairy a little tartly, but mind what I say. Well then, Jenny, suppose that you and I have a game together with my pearls. I shall throw them and you shall catch them again and drop them into the basin. And when we have done, I do not mind letting you have a drop of water to drink. You are a very little bird, and a little drop of water will do you. The wren asked no better than to play with the fairy, so the game began. The fairy caught the drops of water as they fell and threw them to the wren, who caught them in her bill, one after another, of course, then dropped them into the basin. The wren was a clever bird and played so well that she only missed three times. The fairy was delighted and declared she had never had such fun. In short, they played till they were both tired when the fairy said, There, Jenny, that will do for today. Drink your drop of water and go home to the palace. You may come again tomorrow and have another game with me, but mind that you tell no one about my pearl fountain. May I not tell the princess? asked the wren. Certainly not, said the fairy. If you do, I shall never forgive you. Besides, I am a fairy, and I shall find it out and punish you at once. The wren promised not to say a word and flew home to her cage in the palace. She was afraid lest the princess should ask her where she had been, as she often did, but she had just been told by her father that he had promised her in marriage to the king of the Diamond Isles, and she was so full of that, and of all the diamonds she was to have, that she never even saw when the wren flew in through the window. The wren made as little noise as she could, and pecked her supper quietly, though she had never been so hungry in her life. Water may turn into pearls, but it is not the thing to satisfy one's appetite. Well, the next day, the wren flew to the pearl fountain, and the fairy threw pearls at her, and the wren caught them in her bill and dropped them into the basin. 
When she was tired, she had her drop of water, but though she asked to be allowed to bathe in the fountain, the fairy would not hear of it, and was very cross with her for so much as thinking of such a thing. The princess was not in her room when the wren flew back to her cage that day, and when she came in, the wren had her head under her wing and was fast asleep. Matters went on so for a good while. Every day, the wren flew to the pearl fountain and played at catching the pearls with the fairy, and every evening, she flew home to her cage in the room of the princess, who was so taken up with her wedding clothes that she never thought of asking her where she had been. The fairy became so fond of the wren that she thought she would leave her in charge of the fountain while she went to see her sister again. The wren did not like being left alone, but the fairy promised not to be long away. I shall be back before sunset, she said, and you may play as much as you like with my pearls and even drink three drops of water. And all I want you to do is to stay and watch by the fountain, and if anyone should come nigh it, to call me three times. I shall hear you and come at once. The wren agreed to this and stayed by the fountain whilst the fairy went to see her sister. She played with the pearls till she was tired. Then she drank three drops of water. Then she stood on the edge of the basin and thought how nice and cool a bath would be. The day was a hot one. The fairy was away. She will never know anything about it, said the wren to herself. She spread out her wings, fluttered over the water, and had the most delightful bath she had ever had in her life. She was enjoying herself to her heart's content, and had just begun drying herself in the sun when there came a great rushing noise which filled the whole forest. It was the king of the fairies driving by, but the wren knew nothing about that. She was frightened out of her wits. Indeed, she lost her head entirely, and instead of calling the fairy as she had promised to do in case of danger, she flew home to the palace as fast as ever her wings would take her and never thought herself safe till she lay panting in the bottom of her cage. It unluckily happened that the princess was in her room just then, trying on her wedding dress. Why, Jenny, she cried, what is the matter with you? I was bathing in the forest, answered the wren, when there came a great noise that frightened me, so I flew home. See? I am not dry yet. She shook her wings, and a beautiful pearl rolled down on the bottom of the cage. I declare, that is a pearl, said the princess all amazed. Why, Jenny, where have you been bathing, and where did you get that lovely pearl? A pearl? repeated the wren, who did not know what to say. Yes, a pearl, said the princess, who had picked it up and was looking at it. The biggest, whitest, loveliest pearl I ever saw. Where did you get it? The wren tried not to answer this, but the princess insisted upon knowing how she had got the pearl, and the wren did not dare to deny her. So having first made her promise that she would not mention it again, she told her all about the fairy and the pearl fountain. When the princess heard about a fountain in which every drop of water became a pearl, she nearly went crazy, so eager was she to get at it. She wanted the wren to take her to it at once, but that the wren would not do. Then she tried to coax her into stealing some of the pearls and bringing them home to her, but the wren would not hear of such a thing. Well, at least I shall keep that pearl said the princess, and the wren, who could not take it from her, said yes, she might. When the wren flew to the pearl fountain the next day, the fairy gave her an angry look. Why did you leave my fountain yesterday before I came home? she asked. I heard a great noise, and I got frightened, 
answered the wren. Why did you not call me? asked the fairy. I forgot it, replied the wren. I miss a pearl, said the fairy. What have you done with it? The wren was afraid to say the truth, so she answered, I was playing with the pearls when one rolled out and fell in the grass, and I could not find it again. The fairy could have known the truth by looking in her book, but she kept it under a stone in the bottom of her basin, and there were so many pearls on top of it that she did not like to disturb them. Well, she said to the wren, you have behaved very badly, and I am very angry with you. But if I forgive you this time, will you do it again? Oh, no, indeed, answered the wren. So they made it up and had a game and were as happy together as they had ever been. As soon as she took the pearl from the wren, the princess sent for the court jeweler and gave it to him to set, for she meant to wear it on her wedding day. The jeweler declared that the pearl was the finest he had ever seen, upon which the princess, instead of being glad that she had it, only thought of all the pearls in the fountain which she had not. She lay awake the whole of that night, thinking of them still, and one thing she was resolved upon when she got up in the morning and that was to find out the pearl fountain and to take some of the fairy's pearls. She has so many of them, thought the princess, that she ought not to mind my having a few. Then what a fine thing it will be for me to be spoken of as the princess who had so many pearls and who married the king of the Diamond Isles. The wren was in no hurry to meet the fairy that day, she took her fly rather late. But the princess, who had been watching her since the morning, followed her at a distance, entered the forest after her, and stealing behind the trees, soon found out the pearl fountain and saw the fairy and the wren playing together. At last the wren flew away, and the fairy, who was tired, laid herself down on the moss to sleep. The princess waited a while, then she stole softly on tiptoe to the edge of the marble basin, and holding up both her hands, she caught the pearls as fast as they fell. When her hands were full, she dropped the pearls down on the moss and thought to begin again and have quite a heap of them. But the fairy, who had been counting them in her sleep all the time, now missed them, and starting up said angrily, who steals my pearls? The princess was so frightened that she had not a word to say for herself, and the fairy said again in the same angry voice, What brought you here? I wanted some pearls from the pearl fountain, replied the princess. And who told you about the pearl fountain? asked the fairy. The wren told me, answered the princess. And who are you? inquired the fairy. I am the king's daughter, said the princess, and I am going to marry the king of the Diamond Isles, and as your fountain is in my father's kingdom, I think you might give me some pearls for a wedding present. You shall not have one pearl from my fountain, said the fairy. I keep all these for myself. But go back the way you came, and stand at the foot of the rock on your right hand as you leave the forest. You will see pearls rolling down its sides. These you may pick up. They are small, and I do not mind letting you have them. May I have them all? asked the princess. Every one, replied the fairy. But mind, it is only for this once and though you may stay as long as you please and take away as many pearls as you can pick up, you need never come again, for not another pearl of mine shall you get. Though the princess thought the fairy very stingy not to let her have a few big pearls, 
She also thought that little pearls were better than none, so she thanked her and went back the way she had come. She found the rock to her right, just outside the forest, and sure enough, there were the beautiful pearls rolling down its sides, looking so white and clear in the moonlight. The princess began picking them up as fast as she could. I must have a necklace, she thought, and as the pearls are small, it will take a good many. Then when she really had enough for a necklace, she wanted some for a tiara. After that, she wanted bracelets, and after bracelets, a waistband like the fairies, then a trimming for her wedding dress, then pearls for rings, earrings, and brooches, then more pearls for double sets of everything, then pearls to give away to her ladies, then pearls for herself to keep. In short, though she spent the night gathering pearls, she had not got half enough by daybreak. She was very tired, but since she could have pearls only this once, she thought it would be the greatest pity in the world to go away without taking as many as she could. So the pearls rolled down the rocks, and the princess picked them up, and the more she had, the more she wished to have. When the king heard that the princess was missing, he was in a sad way. He asked the wren about her, but all the wren knew was that the princess was in her room when she went out to have her fly, and that she was no longer there when she came back. No one else knew anything, and only one thing was certain, that the princess had not spent the night in the palace. The king, her father, was distracted with grief, and the king of the Diamond Isles, who had just arrived in order to marry the princess, lost his appetite at once. He felt in such trouble. The king sent messengers to look for his daughter in every direction. They scoured the country and found her at length very tired and rather hungry, but still picking up pearls. When they wanted to take her back to the palace, she said it was out of the question, and they were to tell the king that she had still ever so many pearls to gather before she could leave the spot. The king was very much amazed when the messengers came back without the princess and told him where they had found her, what she was doing, and what she had said. Pearls, said the king, and what can she want with pearls when she is going to marry the king of the Diamond Isles tomorrow? I must go and see about all that myself. But when the king went and found the princess and saw all the pearls she had gathered, and those she was gathering still, and when she told him that if she once left the spot, she could never have any pearls again, he began to think what a pity it would be not to let her get as many as she could. Well, my dear, he said to his daughter, I shall ask the king of the Diamond Isles to wait a day or two, and in the meanwhile you may go on gathering pearls. And suppose that for fear of accidents, I should take away these and keep them for you under lock and key. The princess agreed to this. The king took away all the pearls she had picked up, and there was quite a heap of them, and stowed them away in great chests in the palace. He also asked the king of the Diamond Isles, who recovered his appetite directly on learning that the princess was safe, to wait a few days for her. The king of the Diamond Isles grumbled a little, but to please his father-in-law that was to be, he said he would wait seven days for the princess. But when the seven days were out, the princess said she had not yet got pearls enough, and her father persuaded the king of the Diamond Isles to wait seven days more. And so matters went on from one seven days to another, the princess still gathering pearls, and the king her father taking them away and locking them up, and neither thinking they had enough, till the king of the Diamond Isles got tired waiting, and went off one morning without so much as ever saying goodbye. Indeed, he went straight off to the queen of emeralds, whose daughter he married that afternoon. The king was vexed, and the princess felt rather sorry, but she thought she must only gather more pearls to make up for all the diamonds she had missed. 
So she went on picking them up, and when she had a heap, her father took it away in a great sack and locked it up, till at length all his chests were full. And he thought one day he must see how many thousand pearls he had got. He unlocked one chest and opened a sack, and out came ever so many drops of water that rolled all over the floor. My goodness, cried the king, there's some mistake. He opened the next sack. Out came more drops of water, then the next, and the next again, and all the sacks and all the chests were full of drops of water, and in the whole of them there was not so much as one pearl. For the pearls were pearls for the princess only, and for nobody else. When the king saw this, and what a mistake he had made, he got into such a rage that he had a fit, of which he died the next day. The princess was very sorry for her father's death, but she said the pearls were pearls indeed, and she went on gathering them at the foot of the rock. There she stands to this day, picking them up as fast as she can, and never thinking she has enough. When the wren flew to the forest again, the fairy was ever so angry with her for having told the princess about the pearl fountain. But the wren begged so hard for forgiveness and fluttered so prettily about her feet that the fairy said, Well, I shall forgive you once more, but lest you should tell tales again, you shall stay forever in the forest with me. So whilst the princess is gathering pearls at the foot of the rock, the fairy and the wren are playing at their game with the pearls of the pearl fountain. And no one has ever found out in what forest that fountain is, nor on what mountain that forest grows, nor in what part of the world that mountain lies. <laughs>